Thank you, Dhamar, for the welcome. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, LFU cache optimization. And uh, you know, uh, I'm going to carry forward from where Elena left off. She spoke mostly about LRU, uh, but my focus is more on LFU cache optimization. Uh, a quick introduction, uh, I am the founder of RDB Tools, which is an administration user interface tool for uh, Redis, all flavors of Redis. Um, I'll skip you the details. If you're interested, I can talk later over lunch. Um, oops. So but the focus of this talk is LFU cache. And you know, broadly, LFU is least frequently used, which means that you want to somehow retain cache entries or objects which are used most frequently. Right? And how do you do that? Right? How do you do that within Redis? So it's, it's essentially three steps. Right? Every time a key is accessed, you increment a counter. Right? Uh, but it doesn't stop there, because if you just keep incrementing your counter all along, at some point of time, um, your access patterns will change. And so keys which were very frequently used at some point of time in the past, they are no longer relevant. So you have to, over a period of time, decrement the counter as well, which is step two. right? And then um, you know, the third step is when you run out of memory, right? when Redis runs out of memory, you have to figure out which of these keys should I evict. Right? So that's the third step. Now, Elena spoke a lot about the third step, so I'll just briefly talk about it. But mostly the talk is about how do you increment the counter, how do you decrement the counter, and what levers does Redis provide to you as a developer to optimize LFU. So that's that's basically the talk, right? So um, this this essentially three configurations. Once you enable LFU, there's three settings that you can put up in your file. So one is the LFU log factor, which controls how the counter is incremented. The other is the decay time, which you know, which tells Redis when and how it should decrement the counter. And the third is max memory samples, which uh, Elena spoke about. That it's mostly about how do you find out which keys uh, you know, to evict? So let's look at that a little more in detail. Uh, so first part of it, right? How do you increment the counter? Uh, uh, you know, if you look at the internal Redis data structures, Redis only has a counter of 8 bits. So if you want to track the frequency of an object, of a key, you only have 8 bits, which essentially means that you can only count up to 255. Right? That's not a lot. That's not a lot, right? I mean, real-world use cases, keys are going to be accessed much, much more frequently. But Redis only has 8 bits. So what does it do? Right? And it uses a trick, which is it doesn't really count on every key access. It, it uses a probabilistic algorithm. And the way the algorithm works is if the current counter value is low, the probability that it will be incremented is high. And as you keep incrementing it, um, you know, at some point of time, it will say the probability is low, and it won't increment it that frequently, right? A, a easy way to remember is, you know, let's say that you take a coin and you flip it ten times, right? Uh, and you get a head ten times in a row, right? So what would that tell you? It basically tells. I mean, if you get a head ten times in a row, it means that you've tried to flip the coin that many more times. So it's it's a way, which basically says that uh, I'm not going to increment the counter every time. I'm only going to increment it based on a probability. And then what that means is, let's say that the counter that you see right now is, let's say the counter uh, that Redis has is 10. It doesn't mean that the key was accessed 10 times. It could mean that the key was accessed anywhere between 75 and 125, right? And it's a range, right? So what you're trading off over here by using a probabilistic counter is that you don't have accuracy in the measurement of how often the key was used. But you have the, a range. You have a much broader range uh, you know, uh, to track the frequency of elements. So essentially, this is what that parameter is. LFU, LFU log factor essentially controls how it, when will Redis increment. Higher the log factor, so that's the important thing, right? The, more high, the higher that you set the value, the, more, the less probability that Redis will increment it, which means you have a much broader range of values that the, you know, the frequency can store, but you're trading of accuracy. So simple, simply put, the higher your log factor, the higher range of values you can store, but the accuracy is much lower. Right? Um, 
So that's LFU log factor and we'll look at what does that mean practically in a moment on how, how can you use this to your advantage when you're tuning your cache, right? Um, so this is some you know, values for reference, right? So if the log factor is zero, it means that it's no longer a probabilistic counter. It is actually counting the real frequency. So therefore the range is zero to 255 and the accuracy is the most accurate because whatever is the value is the frequency of the access, right? Now, as you keep increasing the factor, the range increases, which means you can now count up to zero to 30 K if, if your log factor is one, but it's less accurate, right? And, and then uh, the default, the default is log factor 10. So log factor 10 means you can roughly count about up to 1 million accesses to your key, uh, but of course it is less accurate, right? Um, that's the math, that's the theory behind what this parameter is and you know, we'll see how we can tune that in a moment. Um, so, so that's one part, right? You kept on increasing time with your count. Uh, every time your key was accessed, you kept increasing it. The next one is how, when do you decrement it, right? So Redis has a parameter which is called LFU DK time, right? Uh, the default value is one minute, which means that every minute Redis will decrement the counter, right? Now, uh, the documentation for this parameter is a little incorrect. It says that, you know, it halves the value. It really does not have the value, it just decrements it by one every minute. Uh, but, but because this is like a logarithmic scale, so you know, in, this, in effect, when you decrement it by one, you're essentially reducing your frequency, the observed frequency by half. Uh, um, so in practice, what does that mean, right? If, if you, you know, the counter is only 255, because it's eight bit counter, so it can count up to 255. Uh, it means that four hours, 15 minutes is about the window in which all of your frequency that has been accumulated over a period of time gets cleared out, right? So typically the counter is only a four hour, 15 minute window and then it keeps moving away. Which means that if you've got access patterns which are daily or monthly, I mean, you know, if you're storing data in that access pattern, Redis is not going to remember it for that long. The default LFU DK parameter basically tells Redis the access pattern is going to change about roughly every four hours. Uh, so that's the second parameter that controls um, LFU access, right? One little in information, right? So when you start off with a new key, uh, it has not received any access. So what Redis does is it, it basically initializes the counter to five for a newly created key. What that means is if you don't access the key in the first five minutes once it was created, it is eligible for eviction, right? So that's something to uh, remember. So, so we looked at, looked at how Redis increments the counter and how Redis decrements the counter over time. And there are two parameters that you can help, you can use to control. The next step is, if, of course, finding keys to evict. Um, I will not talk about this because you know Elena spoke a lot about this. Um, the only difference between LRU and LFU is how the score is calculated, right? So the same parameter, max memory samples is used, but the score, right? So when you're looking at LRU cache, you're looking at you want to evict keys which have not been, you know, you know, which have got the highest idle time essentially. But when you're looking at LFU, you want keys which have the lowest counter. So Redis just basically does a simple arithmetic. It just says. 255 minus counter and you will maximize that. So essentially it's using the same logic uh, that Elena explained. It's just that the score for LFU is calculated slightly differently um, and max memory, max memory samples is also used in the same way like, like she explained. So, so there we have it, right? This is, this is basically the three parameters that you can control. Now how do you use that to tune your application? That's, that's about next. So. So first up, right, what happens if you choose a wrong log factor, right? Uh, let's assume that your default log factor is 10 and assume that you have a key. You, you know, the most frequently used key in your application is perhaps accessed about 10,000 times in a, you know, in a four hour window. Now, if the frequency of access is 10,000, the counter that Redis would have inside it would be about 50, right? It's, it would be a range, but let's assume that it is around 50, right? 
So which means that even your, though your object is accessed 10,000 times, the value is only 50, it means that in about 50 minutes, the value of that counter will be decremented and get down to zero. Right? So you are essentially not using the complete range um, that your, uh, that you know, uh, and as a result of that, your object is going to be a possible candidate for eviction much sooner than it, it should really be. Right? So, so what is the right value for your application? Right? So you want to use the right, remember that I said that you know, the decay factor is about an optimization between accuracy and you know, the range. Right? So you want to choose a LFU log factor such that your most frequently used key is about 255. The counter is about 255, right? So how do you do that? Well, you just have to experiment. I mean, there isn't, um, I mean, there is some mathematical formula, but it is way too complex, and I couldn't put it up on a slide. So I essentially put up a, you know, a, a set of two commands that you can run. So the first command is basically setting up Redis server with the right configuration. And the second one is you just run Redis benchmark, and you experiment, right? So you find out how frequently, what is the, you know, given your application and your most frequently used keys, how often, you know, what is the frequency, expected frequency, use that to reverse engineer a maximum value and pick up a log factor that makes sense for your application. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's sort of the trick over here. You essentially choose a parameter which gives you the best accuracy, right? And the best accuracy to find that out, experiment a little bit by using these commands and you will get the right value for your application. Um, so the next thing about is, is um, what if your workload changes, right? Now there are, there are um, applications where in the same Redis instance, you've got certain keys which are accessed very frequently there are certain keys which are not accessed very frequently, but you want them to be in memory, right? So you've got a very diverse um, set of usage patterns. I mean, how, how do you deal with that, right? And Redis, Redis does not have a concept of namespaces. Redis does not have a concept of, you know, tune my data set for two different usage patterns. That, it, doesn't, it doesn't exist like that in Redis. And so the traditional Redis answer is, Use two separate Redis instances. You know, with one Redis instance, you tune your, uh, uh, your LFU parameters for one workload, and the other you tune it for the other workload, right? And that's that's perhaps the best way. If you if your data set or if your application usage pattern is such that you would benefit from different LFU tuning parameters, your only option, at least of today, is to split it into two separate Redis instances. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Redis is fairly lightweight and easy to set up multiple instances of it. Um, and you, you know, you, there are other benefits of doing this as well. So you might as well just split into multiple instances. Um, you know, one other interesting thing about um, LFU is how do you find out hotkeys, right? So the Redis, is, sorry, the Redis CLI has this command called as hyphen hyphen hotkeys. If you run that, it will scan the entire key space, and it will identify keys which you know which are which have been used the most frequently right so this is a, a sample output that I, I did from my uh, experiments this morning uh, notice that it is actually doing a scan command behind the schemes and what it essentially is doing is doing a scan command followed by object frequency right so few things right if you have got a very large data set this command will take time right and it is going to scan your entire uh, set. There are other ways to find out, uh, finding out the hotkeys. Um, Redis version 5 onwards, the, the frequency is also stored in the RDB file. So if you take a backup of your data, the frequency of a key is captured in the RDB file. And there are some tools, uh, including RDB tools and there's other open source tools as well, which will uh, you know, which will reverse engineer the RDB file format and extract out the frequency and show you which are the most frequently used keys. So there's a couple of ways to get this data. There's one little catch though, right? The, the frequency, remember that the frequency is 
decremented every time, every one minute. And so if you're trying to, if you're trying to find out your application hotspots and you want to find out what are the hotkeys, it's a good idea, at least in your development QA environment, to set up the decay factor to a very high number so that Redis essentially does not decrement the keys anymore. Right? Um, so with this, you will at least get a better sense of what are your hotkeys and how do you work with them. That's about it from me. Um, I'm happy to take any questions or else, Itamar, we can break for lunch.